Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian from Beat Turismo and today changing the brakes on the MDX. Um, this car's got like 80, 88,000 miles on it and we're starting to get a whole lot of vibration, uh, especially on some of the long hills we have here in Pennsylvania. You know, get that shaky wheel and it's just embarrassing, not safe, you know, to know that we're not getting maximum stopping power. So we're gonna go ahead and change out pads and rotors today. I don't think the pads actually need to be changed, but if we're going through all the work to take out rotors, I'm not gonna put old pads back on. I'm not that cheap. Okay, I am that cheap, but we're not gonna do that. So here we go. All right, so first step of this is, so here's how you wanna lift it up. I've got a three-ton jack, a hockey puck, and it's perfectly fine to lift on that little seam right there, that little tab, which is roughly there related to the wheel. So there you go. Next step, let's get the wheels off. Okay, you got the wheel off. Then there's two bolts, one here and one down here. Those are 17 millimeter. Just crank those off. Now the caliper can come loose. You still have to remove the bracket, but at least the caliper's free. Okay, check it out. Got the caliper free. Got the pads off, sitting on the ground here. This is the outer, this is the inner. And, uh, oh, that was thunder. Shoot. You can see, I mean, technically, those pads are still past inspection, definitely. So, you can see, even with 85,000, 90,000 miles, whatever this thing has, um, still on the set, this is the factory pads. So that's pretty good. Okay, I took off the caliber um, bracket bolts. It's two, they're 19 millimeter. And I suggest a half inch breaker bar to get those suckers off because they are tight. You'll, you'll hurt your hand or whatever, trying to do it any other way. So now we're onto the step of that little tiny screw, which sometimes you have pretty bad luck with that screw. I think we'll do okay. You don't try to do it with a screwdriver. Don't waste your time, don't waste um, yeah, just don't waste your time. If you try to do it with a screwdriver, you'll break the screw and then you'll have to drill it out with a stinking drill and that sucks. Get your impact, um, they call it an impact driver. I'll try to show you what that looks like. Basically, you, it's a screwdriver with a big, um, uh, a big boss or whatever you want to call it on the end and you hold it there and when you hit it, it pushes in and turns it uh, like a quarter turn at the same time. That's the perfect thing to get this thing off of there. Did we get our, are these the brakes or are they something else? Yeah, these here are the brakes. So these are the old brakes. I don't want to touch them because I'll get my fingers all dirty. I'm trying to keep my hands clean because I'm also smoking some food. No, so that's what you need. See how it fits in there nicely? You'll need a number two um, screwdriver tip. Phillips head tip, whatever you want to call it. I'm using a slightly smaller hammer than I'd like to. I should probably be using a bigger sledge. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just hold that camera and watch what I'm doing here. So, before you get started, you kind of gently turn it like in the direction that you need to turn it because inside the tool, there's a bit of a mechanism that turning it um, winds everything up. So, I'm going to do this standing up. Okay. Oh man, I wish I had a piece of gum. But anyway, um, so I got the screw out. What I actually needed to use was a number three tip and then pound the crap out of it. So I kind of ruined it with the number two. I, I have spares, of course. I'm gonna try the other side with a number three instead of a number two and see how that goes. Okay. Not even waste the time with a number two. So how are we gonna get that off? Okay, so this is on here kind of tight. It's not screwed on or fastened or anything. It's just held on there by surface rust. So you could put a little tool into those two holes, which would force the um, rotor to slide off. Other thing you could try, sometimes you can just get away with tapping on it. So, this it wouldn't come off with the hammer, you saw that. That was a whole lot of fun. It's so loud, it still hurts my ears. But anyway, so what you gotta do then is find two bolts that fit that thread. Yeah, I can still hear, I'm good. I bet I could look up and find what those threads are. 
they're a typical Honda thread. So if you can find a 12 millimeter bolt from somewhere else on another project or some spare parts or whatever, then it will probably fit right in. So anyway, you just need to put that in until it bottoms out and then just kind of go back and forth. And look at that, it's already coming loose. See it? Look very closely. already? Mm -hmm. So are we going to use that thing again that you're shaking? No, we're throwing this away. Would you, do you have another one? Yeah. Yeah, they're in the box over there. Okay. Okay. Wow, that looks so... Um, that's off. Looks kind of... That looks very rusty. Yeah, but it's normal. So, if you don't have bolts that you can stick into those holes, then you can just keep beating it with a hammer. It'll eventually come loose. If you gently pry, stick something in here. Look, buddy. Gently stick something in there and kind of like just give it a little bit of pressure and then hammer on the opposite side. Then it will eventually come loose. All right, so well, here's the real big question. I never opened the box of new parts. So does the new stuff match? Is it right? We're about to find out. Oh, I'll keep the camera on. I don't think that might, that might not match. It might, but no, nobody knows. I don't know. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that looks pretty good. So it looks the same to me. The most important thing is, well, <laughs> does it fit? We'll find out. It looks like it will. Wow. Looks like it will. Yeah. So slide that on there. So we're doing the other sides and all the others? So we're just doing this so it seats down on there. Now we can go ahead and put the screw on there, which you don't absolutely need, but we're going to do it anyway. Very fun. Okay, so we put that little screw in there. It's, I don't know what you call that, if it's like a retaining screw, but all it really does is, all it really does is hold it in place, yeah. So we got the new pads here. They look to be the same. And what you want to pay attention to is look for this clip. This is the wear indicator. So it just needs to be in the same position as the other one. So the inside one gets a wear indicator and the outside one does not get a wear indicator. So that's that. Um, um, can I lift one up to see all? Yeah, they're, they're feel, pretty clean. Well, these are actually a bit heavy, but also kind of light at the same time. Oh, okay. They look like a piece of brick. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of are. It's a piece of uh, ceramic. And then the metal. With metal strips of uh, copper inside, I guess. I don't know what it is really. Okay, so we're gonna change off the sliders. These are called sliders. These are on the caliper um, brackets. We're gonna change those out so that uh, everything's nice and new and clean. I'm not gonna, no. probably won't video that part, but basically we just gotta pop this off, put the new so, one on. Somehow we, how do you do it? You just gotta like pull it very hard? Well, I would probably take screwdriver I, I think I would try to pry it off do that well that was really easy and look at these see how this one is smooth here and this one has that little tab so we just want to make sure we pay attention to that and, and get it on the same way they were when we took it off that'll make sure we don't have any problems with noise or uh, assembly issues or anything like that so it looks like all of these are smooth None of them have that little extra tab, which is fine. I can understand that. That's a separate part number you would need. If oh, I think that's just to hold it in in case you. I think it's to hold it in in case it like it's like falling down, just in case uh, mm. if you want to connect it to the car. Maybe. We're gonna. Okay. So I'll just squeeze that on there. Okay. That should be good. So here's what I wanted to show on the other side. This is kind of take two of that. 
which I screwed up on the other side. We're gonna do it right on this side. So, I got this impact driver with a number three Phillips head um, tool in the end. Yeah, there we go. There's that. So let's just see how that goes. This time we're gonna use our bigger hammer. Oh boy, look at that. Right out. So nice and no damage to the threads. I hope you can see that. I'm holding this screw <laughs> three inches from the camera lens. So there's the screw, perfectly fine. We're gonna reuse that one, because we can. Let's see about getting the rotor off now. I could waste time pounding it with the hammer like I did on the other side, but that didn't really work. So, just gonna just gonna put the bolts in on this side. So we're bottomed out. Let's see how easy this is. Quarter turn. Ah, oh, it's already coming loose. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. Off. hitting it with the hammer like an idiot. Nothing. Oh good, there's a leaf blower. That's awesome. Alright, well this is going pretty well, so I'm gonna just keep it rolling here until I put it all back together. Had to run inside for the new one. Here it is. I'm usually a little more careful. But I'm in a hurry. Try to be careful how you hold the rotors because any grease or anything that gets on your hands, you know, if you if you hold the rotors and touch the faces, then you're gonna transfer, you're gonna transfer that grease or whatever you've got onto the rotor, and that will cause it to act funny. Okay, that's on. Now what's next? Well, we gotta change the hardware out of the bracket. <clears throat> we get the hardware. Okay, like I, I mentioned earlier, you see, just make sure there's no difference between the two sliders. The factory sliders are different from top to bottom. See that little extra tab there? This one doesn't have, but. Placement stuff, um, the sliders are the same. So they just sort of snap into place. I hope you're seeing this. And if you're wondering about the gloves, I mean, it's not that my hands are delicate or anything, but I just don't want to get them all dirty. <clears throat> I'm smoking a piece of pork later today, and I'd like to have my hands look good <laughs> and know that they're clean for when I have to handle that. Okay, sliders on, good to go. It's so easy. Set that back in place. And uh, the big 19 millimeter bolt goes on there. Okay, so trying to balance leg fatigue and clock management. So I really want to get this done. Football's on. There's your outer one. The inner one's always a little more challenging, of course. Not 
today, apparently. <laughs> Went right in. Okay, now for the caliber. Two piston caliber. And yeah, you need to drive the pistons back in. And yeah, you don't want to damage your EBS pump. And the car's not on, so this is what I've always done. One in. Get it down here to where that's uh, taken up that space, and now you can drive in the other one. This is the worst thing I've ever done. actually pushing the fluid back up to the reservoir. I also remembered I forgot the clips. Let go on the pads. Oh my gosh. Leg fatigue is killer. Those are clips or springs, whatever you want to call them. I think they call them spreader springs. So your goal with this, really, is get one started, and get the other one started, and then you can tighten them down. It's a 17 millimeter, I believe I mentioned that before. You don't have to He-Man or Hercules it. it. Just needs to be tight. All right, that's it. Now to put the wheel on. Um, may as well do that part. Wheels on. Always start the nuts. Just get them on a thread or two before you apply power. We'll use a torque wrench to properly tighten them. We had a sale! I'll be right back with the torque wrench. Okay, I think I can do this. Check it out. So this is to be set to 80. I think I actually have the wrench set to 90, so we're going a little high. I don't think there's any harm in that. I'm gonna do this on both sides, of course, and drive it, do it again. You're not gonna see that part. I'm just gonna have to take my word for it. And yes, this car needs new tires. There's a different set for winter, um, being that it's September right now. Uh, these are only going to be on a couple more weeks and then we'll switch to the winter set. And while the winter set's on, I'll take these and get new summers put on. Okay, well that was changing the brakes on the MDX. You saw that, that was fun, right? So that's the end of this video. If you like, if you like what you see, this kind of content, please do consider liking and subscribing. Let me know what you think, if this is too much or not enough or stupid, <laughs> um, whatever. And we'll uh, we'll keep it coming or not. Um, for now, thanks for watching. Have a good afternoon, and please keep right, pass left, please. It's very important. Have good lane discipline.